Good. So, um, yeah, checking the time zone. Good afternoon, or <laughs> hello, everyone. Um, welcome you here in the uh, presentation about security and privacy. Um, so, we want to talk a bit about today what do you need to take into account if you want to run OpenStack and across borders with customers across borders and um, yeah, also having multiple sites, exchanging data back and forth. Um, so doing cross-border traffic and looking at the United States, looking at the European Union, looking at Germany in special, where we are coming from, um, yeah, and, and the international scene in general gives you a lot of headache. And um, today we want to yeah, give a bit of context, what you need to take into account um, when you're doing that, where are the pitfalls, and also some, some uh, yeah, steps how to, to mitigate that. Some words about ourselves, Daniela. Yeah. So my name is Daniela Ebert. I'm working for T-Systems for more than 10 years, and I'm with in the Open Telecom Cloud team um, as an engineer, and I uh, take care of our platform. And uh, today we're here um, in a substitution of our colleague who went seriously ill and unfortunately can't take this presentation. So Sebastian and me, we are trying to do our best to uh, transport the message. Yes, Thank so you. keep your rotten tomatoes and all that uh, safe. So maybe we can't answer all your questions, but we will really do our best to stand in for Daniel, who should do the presentation today. Good, um, some words about myself, uh, Sebastian Wenner. I'm one of the Open Telecom Cloud architects doing this now since yeah, two and a half years. We are building up this uh, Open Telecom Cloud, a, a public cloud run out of Germany by Deutsche Telekom in a partnership together with Huawei. Um, yeah, and yeah, being part of it since uh, day zero, um, I designed and built a lot of it that we, we are running now today. Goals of this presentation, so what should be answered today? So give you an understanding who are the decision makers. So what are the stakeholders? To whom do you need to talk if you, you are talking about privacy and, and yeah, all the, the security relevant topics uh, in, uh, in the context of a public cloud? Then uh, data privacy versus country. So legislation is not common, not in every country, and especially not uh, between Europe and, and the United States, and also not within Europe. So what are the differences? What do we need to, to think about? What do we need to take into account here? Then uh, digging a bit deeper on, on European data privacy. So what is happening in the European Union? Um, as I don't know how deep you are involved in that topic and how much you are aware about that. Um, so then certificates. So I mean, all the clouds out there, out there are certificated and have some fancy uh, certificates that they can show you. Are they worth the paper that they are printed on or not? And is it just a placebo or what technical solutions may be needed? And, um, then digging a bit deeper in the, the technical implementation, so what encryption solutions for storage out there, what for server, and um, also then um, showing a bit of what we are doing in that area, so what solutions in the Open Telecom Cloud are there. Yes, let's get started. Um, so this whole game about yeah, data privacy, um, is changing. So if you look at today, and speaking of today, this is a not so, yeah, how to, to put it, 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 the risk is low. So I mean, maximum fines that you can get um, are around uh, 50 to 300,000 euro. Um, if you are a big company, I mean, that doesn't bother you that much. Um, but looking a bit in the future and, um, GDPR, so the European Data Protection Regulation is upcoming. And then we are talking about really other dimensions of a fine that you can face. 
So there you, we talk about 20 million maximum or even 4% of your annual worldwide turnover. And that really hurts. So keeping that in mind and, and thinking about what that means for you, um, really changes also the way that you need to have a, a look at data privacy and, and security to be on the safe side if you are exchanging data across countries. So that is really a risk to your company <laughs> and a risk to your customers um, if you are not getting it right. So, as said, there are new risks that need new decisions. So, what ways are out there to, to mitigate that? And um, also, as we, we heard in the keynotes, um, using OpenStack and using open source especially, nowadays become more common and, and really the, the standard. Um, so, if you want to do it secure, if you want to do it right, you're not looking for a commercial product, so you are looking for an open source product because you know or can, can have a look into it and know what's ongoing and uh, what is beneath. Um, but also doing that and, and using open source and open stack there, this brings new impacts that you, you need to take care of. So um, one point is the place of jurisdiction. So, if you are doing data over in the European Union and the data is stored in the European Union, then the place of your jurisdiction is also in the European Union. So um, that is one thing that, that changes the game. So you can't just say, hey, I'm an American company, um, so that doesn't bother me. If the data is stored over there, then you have to talk to the local guys. And then also, if you are doing cloud, um, and just using a cloud, then the big question is who owns the data? So who is really responsible for your data? And, and that, these, these questions we are trying to, to answer and, and, and um, giving a bit more insight on. Yes, um, decision for OpenStack. So given the fact you decided or you convinced your, your managers to go with OpenStack. So you, you took that decision and, and you want to move forward, um, then just out of a sudden, these guys appear here. So you will suddenly face a security officer and you will face a data protection officer um, which have a completely different opinion about what you want to do and what you are allowed to do if you're doing um, this OpenStack thing. And um, yeah, they have really a, a completely different mindset um, that you need to be able to answer. And um, most of the times, they do not even care about technical details. What they want to see is a sheet of paper that proves before a court this cloud or this cloud provider that we are going with is certified and they are doing things right and I can trust them and, and really this is the input that you need to have at hand um, if you yeah, go down that path. So either doing it on your own, you need to be compliant to all these certificates or to, to these requirements or if you're choosing an external provider, um, then you need to have that at hand. So you need to prove data protection. So the data that is stored in the cloud is protected. It's not accessible by anyone, um, even the operators, and I will come to that later. Um, IT security is done right, so everything is, is protected, but also we are compliant to really these, these different laws that are out there and, and that are uh, making your life harder than it should be. Or, Maybe not. I mean, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's, it's um, protecting your customer's data and protecting your data. So um, it's, it's really a valuable thing. What makes it so complicated is that everybody is doing it different. So that is the, really the, the pain that, that we are facing here. Yes, so what we need is a safe harbor. Um, so just playing a bit with the 
these words, even though safe harbor is, is no longer existent by, by now. Um, but but it, it's the starting point that we are talking about. So for a long time, if you wanted to do um, business between the European Union and the United States, safe harbor was the, the fundamental agreement that we had between um, these two areas to, to exchange um, personal data. So everything that is person related, like my name, my birth date, um, my address, everything is um, personal data. And once that is being exchanged, we need a, a agreement between the states how to do that in a secure way so that companies can rely on that. Um, what do you think about an IP address? Is an IP address a um, personal data? Most probably you would say no, but um, going to court, um, <coughs> sorry, um, the, the European uh, court decided otherwise. So they said an IP address is personal data. Just a moment, please. So in October 2016, um, the Court of uh, Justice of the European Union, as it is named, um, they decided this, that even an IP address is personal data. So once you, you store IP addresses or um, do your yeah, examination on IP addresses, um, you are handling um, personal data. And that is an important fact that you need to know. So even the, what seems to be the easiest on, and more, most basic things in the cloud um, puts you at the point where you're handling personal data. And then you need to, to be aware of that and, and do things right. Um, so bottom line of it, so as it starts with these little things, so check carefully <coughs> which cloud provider you are selecting so that you are having a, a safe ha harbor for, for your data. Um, and, and continuing that, um, so most of the time also you would then say, okay, even if I do the IP thing right, um, I do not have access to personal data as I do not look into yeah, what the customer is doing and, and can't access it. That is a wrong statement. That is fundamentally wrong in the terms of how um, court is, is seeing it in jurisdiction. So for example, in, in Germany, by, by German law, so um, by, uh, or up, valid up until 2018, until we have GDPR, um, they have a statement um, that you must have an ADV. And that is one of the wonderful German word creations that you can have, which is a Auftragsdatenverarbeitungsvereinbarung. Um, so that um, we, we have, in, in, in English it's called commissioning of data processing, um, so that you have an allowance by the customer to automatically handle their data. Um, means in the, the actual daily doing that this Prove or gives you really hard times how you have to handle certain things. So even if you have an operator operating your cloud, they may not be in the position to modify user access rights because that would put them in the position that they could yeah, give themselves the identity of a customer and by doing that accessing the, the customer's data. So they must not be allowed to be even able to change these identity things so that um, they could impersonate a, a customer. That has to be something that is completely automated and can, can only be triggered by an external system. So who's controlling the controller? Uh, or he, who's controlling the operator? So I mean, at some point in time, you need to be able to do it. There must be somebody who's able to do it. But, Having these additional layers in your operations to, to do it right and to be compliant to these um, laws is really an, an important fact that you, you need to take care about. Yes, then um, looking a bit in the European Union. Um, so European Union is not European Union. 
as for example, Germany does things fundamentally different than, for example, Ireland is doing. I mean, you heard that many um, companies are hosting in Ireland. Um, so why are they going to Ireland? Why are they not going to Spain or wherever? Because Ireland is really an island within, uh, it actually is, um, but also <laughs> in terms of um, security, it is an island where you can do much more things than you can do in, in the rest of the European Union. So this is a very nice article I found. So it's by the Irish Times, and they are telling you that Ireland is the, in the top three U EU countries undermining data privacy. And also the, the, the sentence at the bottom, um, Ireland is one of the EU top three offenders for undermining data privacy rules according to the an analysis of leaked Brussels documents. So they are even, even saying that about themselves. So that is really a problem that we are seeing there. Um, and look who's already there in, uh, in Ireland. So, um, I mean, Microsoft is, is one of the, the most famous examples. And um, looking ahead of time, um, I mean, 2018's GDPR is hitting us. And are they prepared to handle that change? Um, Mars and um, McCain Fitzgerald is saying, no, they aren't. Um, and that will really give a hard time to all of these, com uh, these companies that are doing their hosting business in Facebook, uh, in, in, sorry, in, in, in Ireland. Like Facebook, like Twitter, like Microsoft, like Google, like AWS, like Zalando. Um, they are all hosted there. And I mean, you saw 4% of the annual um, turnover that, that they do, and that is really a lot. Um, so they have to do a lot of work to, to be prepared for what is upcoming. And um, Forrester has a, a nice heat map produced um, data, uh, privacy and data protection by country. So if you look at that, Europe mostly is green, and the United Kingdom with Ireland has an exclamation mark. Um, United States, Russia, um, I mean, the only thing that is behind is just China. Um, so really there, there is a, a problem that, that needs to be solved, that needs to be taken into account uh, if you want to, to do um, or protect your data uh, in the, the daily business. Um, yeah. so. And here, um, if you want to, to look it up on your own uh, heat map, forestertools.com, um, there you can, can find the, the heat map and, and, and check on your own or dig in deeper um, for some more details. Yeah, and, and who is affected by it or who was already affected by it? Look at the big players um, and, and let's face it. So Google is, is one of them. Um, so the FBI sued um, Google to, to turn over their, um, or hand over their data to, to the FBI. Um, it, it, it is happening and, and, and it has happened before and will happen again. Um, so Google is one of the, the companies affected by it. Um, the, the verdict uh, is pending and, and they are um, handing over emails uh, to the, the FBI. Um, Amazon, so, I mean, we, we heard yesterday uh, Snowden speaking and, and having Snowden speaking up and, and releasing all these uh, things to the public um, and also the, the recently leaked documents um, about Amazon are showing that, that also Amazon is um, interacting with the um, yeah, let's say lawful in inception uh, that we are facing. So also Amazon is not a secure harbor for your data. So, so they are handing over data to, to the NSA in that case um, that we, we were facing here. Microsoft. Again, Microsoft, Microsoft in, especially in Ireland, they, they wanted to be on the secure side and said, okay, look, we are in Europe with Europe legislation. Um, 
it didn't help them. Also there, the, the NSA um, tried to get hold of encrypted messages that um, Microsoft is, is handling on their own. So really the, the, the problem is there. Um, what is the way out? How can we, we handle that? Um, as a first off, um, Microsoft is partnering in Germany with uh, Deutsche Telekom as a data trusty model. It doesn't have to be Deutsche Telekom. I mean, it happens, uh, luckily for us, that we are doing it in, in, uh, in Germany. Um, but Microsoft choose us as a data trusty. What does that mean? They are running uh, their Azure and, and Office uh, 365 in, in our data centers in Germany. And they handed over the complete service to, to us, T Systems, to run their business for them. Turning that around, what does it mean? If US law or um, NSA, FBI is coming to them and telling them, hey, I need access to your data, they can say, that is very nice that you demand that from me, but actually, don't go to me and demand it from me. Please go over to Germany, demand it from T Systems because they are owning the data or they, they are running it for me and, and they have access to the data. I do not even have access to that data. So if you want the data, sue them and, and try to get it out of there. And as far as the, the current discussion is going, it seems to be the, the only model that tries or seems to, to be, be um, doable in, in, in terms of, of going to court and saying I do, don't have access or I don't want to hand it out to you. Because you are really going out of the, the American jurisdiction and, and going to another company and, and another country and, and trying to, to do it there. But there the, the data is protected by German privacy laws. And, and I think that is really the, um, the big differences uh, that we have there. Um, I can even tell you a, a nice quote here. Um, Built on Microsoft's trusted cloud principles of security, privacy, compliance, and transparency, the Microsoft Cloud Germany brings data, um, residency in transit, and at rest in Germany and data replication across German data centers for business continuity. Tom Key, GM of uh, Microsoft Azure. So really that was their way to, to protect their data. And that was a, a first off, and, and let's see how things evolve in the next year until we, we see GDPR coming then active and alive. Um, where are we today? I mean, um, as, as already said, um, the uh, safe harbor agreement was, um, was killed by the European Union, um, that it is no longer valid. And we had to quickly come up with a replacement for, for safe harbor to still enable um, companies doing business um, between the European Union and um, United States. The replacement was the privacy shield, even though it looks very similar to what we had before with Safe Harbor, still there are some basic differences. Main thread is that if you do not comply, you may get thrown out of the list of compliant companies that are allowed to do data exchange of uh, personal data. Um, but nevertheless, it is yeah, to a large extent similar to what we had before with Safe Harbor. Um, and that not being enough, it is threatened from different uh, directions um, to not being valid anymore. So I mean, on the one hand side, we, we have again the European Union testing it and, and putting it to, to court and, and seeing if it is enough to, to be compliant with European um, data privacy demands that we have. On the other hand side, uh, we have Donald Trump now being the President of the United States. Um, it just jeopardizes things that are happening there. Um, he already had one, um, uh, what was it called? Um, 
Now, the, he said already that um, data from non-US people is not that protect worthy uh, than it is from uh, US citizens. So, um, in other words, it's not so important to, to protect data uh, from, from the European Union or from, from companies from the outside. And um, so, Privacy Shield being killed by Trump is not one of the things that is so unrealistic. So, and, and if that would happen, where's the basis how we can exchange then uh, data in the future. So really that is one of the things and, and also the, the, as I said, the, the European Union targeting it added. So yeah, it's complicated and, and we really need to pay attention. So what can we do to make things better? Help ourselves. So looking at a cloud provider and then coming back to, to what we are doing here with OpenStack and, and uh, um, also to, to the options that we have. Um, I mean, if you're doing it on premise, uh, it's your own stuff. You need to take care of it. You can do all the things that you want. But if you go with a cloud provider, then it's really important to keep in mind what do I have under control and what do I don't have under control. So looking at um, the, the infrastructure as a service, in, in terms of data privacy, this is the uh, more or less perfect model. So you get a environment up to the, the upper edge of virtualization. You take care of the operating system, the middleware, the data, the applications. That is all yours. So there you, you can really influence what you are doing, what is happening on term, in terms of encryption. If you are moving up the layer, if you're doing platform as a service, if you are doing software as a service, this gets more complicated. Then you really need to pay attention, as said before, which cloud provider do I choose? Is he doing things right? Um, looking, so <coughs> a bit of marketing slide, forgive me, I, I need to put that in, so we also do need to do a bit of advertising for us. So. Germany is really strict on doing all these things in, in terms of data protection. So we, we have a lot of protection rules and, and also talking to customers, they say, I always have a lot of discussion about cloud security, but if I tell them I do it with Deutsche Telekom, the discussion just ends because they trust us. Microsoft trusts us. So Doing it in, in a secure fashion is really one of the, the important things and being able to prove that to the customers is one important part. But even, I mean, um, something that you might not be aware of here in the United States, that there are even complete groups of people that are not allowed to do cloud business because of the data that they are handling. Doctors, dentists, psychologists, lawyers. And, and really being able to, to, to handle also this data, this is, is really a, a problem that, that needs to be solved. Said before, you need a certificate to prove that. And, and having a certificate is also really a, a point of trust. And if you look at normal website certificates, um, there you have a certificate authority that you trust. And doing that also, or applying this principle to, to the way that you are doing security and certification for a cloud provider, puts this to a whole new level. So you need to have not only the certificate, certificate but also somebody who is um, taking care of that. So a certification authority telling you that the one who is doing the certificate for you is doing it right. Otherwise, you could just go to eBay or Amazon and, and buy a very nice ESO 2000 whatever certificate. Um, print it out, hang it to your uh, entry hall, and, and you're good to go. Um, no, this is really the point. Um, you need to have trustworthy certificates, and, and that will bring trust also to your customers. Um, what is important just to, to do a quick run through it, and that is just part of what we are doing here. So we, we have TÜV Trusted Cloud Service. So TÜV is, is a big deal in, in, in Germany and in Europe. So that is the 
um, a, a institution that is standardizing and, and even watching after our cars um, so that everything is secure there and, and they are really testing and, and validating um, also cloud security. Um, CSA star as the, the cloud security, which is more the, the international thing. Um, ISO 9000 for, for standard quality management that we are doing and service management. Um, for the, the data center in general, um, but also looking at the 27.0, 17 and 18, which is cloud security and cloud privacy um, that are important. Um, maybe one thing also here, zero outage, what you might not have heard of, that is one thing that uh, T-Systems is doing in, in regard to um, yeah, trying to run a, a complete infrastructure without a outage. So that is a, a industry standard that we are just trying to establish. Applying that to a cloud, um, you would say, I, I don't care about outage because my, my application is so scaled um, that this is a complete different game. But also here at the outer edge of your application, there you is the, the thing that you want to achieve, zero outage uh, for your customers. Yes, I think that is enough for the theoretical uh, part of it. Um, moving over to some technical solutions and having Daniela telling you a bit about um, what implementations we are doing on our cloud and, and how yeah. we implemented some things to, to protect your data. Yeah, so let's have a look at our Open Telecom Cloud, which is our public cloud um, we are presenting here. And um, yeah, let's have a look at the um, security aspect and at what kind of implementations we have here. Hopefully that works for me. No, that, that was the wrong direction. Uh, yeah. So um, let's start with the easy one. Um, if you have the backup case, um, this is, I think, one of the simple cases where you have no, no problem um, with security um, loss on because the customer is able to encrypt its data by its own and he can transfer it to the object store and store it there. Um, so the, the customer is the owner of, uh, of the data, he knows the keys and uh, the provider has no, no access to um, the data. So that's a simple use case and um, the data is safe. Um, for the object storage, um, Amazon um, introduced some, some algorithm to, um, yeah, to encrypt the data and uh, we have also implemented that on, on our cloud, so the uh, OBS encryption is, is one of the features um, we, we do offer and, and customer can, can use them. Um, next slide. Um, just shows how, um, how, how to um, access the object storage and how to work with the encryption keys. So, yeah, do you have your account um, name and um, you have an access key and you have a secret access key. So, I think that's, that's a well-known yeah, thing. Straightforward. Yeah, <laughs> that's straightforward. Um, I hope you, that's, that's well-known. Um, that's, that's for the uh, OBS and the, the key management um, we, are, we are doing here is uh, we have a, a box, a, a hardware secure module. Um, this is storing uh, the keys um, and um, yeah, it, it's a black box and it, um, yeah, it meets all, all the requirements for, for compliance and security. And um, is considered to be secure. Yeah, we do not have access to it. It's yeah. just a, a black box, and, and if we try to to let's say open it and access the keys, it will just explode yeah. and self destruct. Not really, but uh, <laughs> it, kind will, of, it, yeah. it will be wiped. So we we do not have access to the data. Nothing. Uh, this is really a. These appliances are out there, and and this is the. The, the common way how to, to really handle keys by the customer. We will talk a bit about it in, yeah. in the Outlook, what, what other solutions are there, but at the moment this is the way 
to, to securely store um, the, the, the keys. keys in the data center. So um, another thing um, our platform provides is to, to encrypt the data disks. Um, that means you can, if you create a data disk, so this is an example from our dashboard, of course this is also available via API, you can choose if you want to have an encrypted disk or not. Um, this slide shows um, while creating um, a disk itself, but you can also choose um, while you're creating a VM if you want to have your um, data disk encrypted or not. Um, I need to admit that the boot disks are not encrypted by so forth at, at the moment, yeah? That um, only applies for data disks currently. And um, yeah, another thing is of course, um, the data is encrypted, nice, the customer can access it, but what happens if um, the customer does give the volume back, uh, is the data really erased? That, that's one of the, the big questions. And um, yes, it is. There is a distributed um, key hash table, hash table in, in metadata region at, at the bottom. And um, if this um, metadata is being deleted, all the data is not accessible anymore. So this ensures that uh, if the disk is, de is deleted, if the hash table is deleted, the data is gone. You cannot access it. And just adding on that, what just comes to my mind, also in, in terms of physical security, no media carrier is leaving our data center in a intact way. So um, if we are decommissioning servers, there's a big shredder where all hard disks, all flash components, whatever, are destroyed before they are leaving the data center. So there's one way in and no way out. So even not to lose data by transporting servers or whatever doing with it, if it is in the data center and if it had customer data on it, it won't leave the data center in a um, secure way or if it's broken. We get replacement part by the supplier and the disk that we are using will be destroyed afterwards. So this is um, what we are currently doing, but we have of course plans or further plans um, in, in the soon future. One of them is um, a solution for trusted boot. That means we want to use the, the TPM from Intel um, to, to ensure that yeah, the, the VMs um, are, are booted um, in a trusted mode. A second one is that we want to have remote attestation. Um, as I stated earlier, these uh, key box is within us and they, it's in our data center. So with the remote attestation, we allow the customer to store the keys at their data center, at their key box. Um, that, that's one of the next steps. And uh, we want to um, establish trusted compute pools to, the, uh, to, do geo, or to allow geofencing. Um, yeah, these are, um, this is the upcoming um, features we want to talk, uh, we want to realize. Um, next and yeah, the next and um, the last slide for today is, yeah, if we put that all in a bigger context, um, what do you need to look at, yeah? If we start at the bottom, at your VM, at your machine, you need to ensure that you have an encryption, that you have the encrypted disks, and um, that your VMs um, are secure, that they boot secure, that they have security um, parameters applied, yeah? Um, one step above, you need to look at your cloud provider. Your cloud provider should be certified, he should um, apply to the, the security rules and to um, the certifications uh, which are out there. And your cloud provider should also have uh, operators which are um, skilled and which are aware and which are certified as well. That's, I think, a really important point. And um, 
one step above. If you look at the data center, it's, it's not just physical security, as Sebastian stated, by destroying disks or by ha having access control. It's, it's all to the, the human beings, again, which should be aware of security risks, which have to be skilled, which have to be trained. And, uh, because um, if somebody wants to do something evil in there and want to, I don't know, destroy your computer, it will be possible. Yeah. And um, yeah, last not but not least, um, you have the internet and um, there of course you have your uh, provider, but um, even if you everything is secure from the machine, the provider and the data center, um, and then you come to the internet, um, you need to make sure that you have um, encrypted traffic because um, otherwise, um, all the other things do not make sense. Yeah. So it stacks together. So even if you are not paranoid, they are spying on you. <laughs> um, and and to, to tell you one last story before we close here, um, encryption of the traffic is very important. But what if VPN is too mainstream for you? And uh, on the last fair that we were talking to a consultant, um, they told me a very nice story about one customer that is really paranoid and to, to mitigate the problem of VPN and I mean look at the, the leaks what came out what uh, uh, NSA and FBI is able to spy on you. The customer is running his own private Tor network to, to do, I mean they, they are doing multinational business and have road warriors out there and to connect them, they are running access nodes on, on various different clouds to, to run their own private Tor network. So let's say Darknet as a service um, to allow secure access for, for his um, yeah, salespeople uh, to the intranet and, and to um, trustworthy information. Um, I mean, they are also doing business with the military, so they really have uh, information they have to protect. And uh, that was their solution to overcome also um, the, the dark and mean internet um, where they might uh, spy on you. So think of all the layers where your data might be at risk and, and make them secure. Good. Yeah. Thanks for your attention. Thanks yeah. for being here. And oops, sir. Um, oops, that we are around here if you have some further questions or in the marketplace booth before. Um, that there you can find us and, and talk to us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.